was five foot seven, 165 pounds in high school, and I was not that fast. He was a kid with a dream as big as a football field. It was part of our life. It was the way to be. It was kind of like, God, if I can go to Notre Dame, I can be someone. Your family's not rich, you're not a great athlete, and you know, only smart kids go there. The kid defied all odds and made his dream come true. This is life. This is not just Notre Dame. Rudy Rudiger was one of 14 children growing up in a Catholic family in Joliet, Illinois. Because you're a little boy thinking you can be anybody. You can do anything. You can go anywhere. And I felt that. That's the power of the dream. So a small boy set his sights on a very tall dream. We weren't rich. My dad worked three jobs just to put food on the table. We played football all the time, dreaming. But at the time, it seemed more like a child's imagination run wild. I'm a dreamer, just like they said I like I was in high school. I'm not a doer. I'm a dreamer. That was the lesson Rudy learned over and over again in school. And the teachers are struggling with you because they're saying, Rudy, pay attention. Rudy, quit dreaming. Mr. Rudiker, would you be interested in joining us? Uh, the House and the Senate... Don't even committee. try. If I were giving out grades for daydreaming, you'd be getting an A. But in civics, you're failing. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the problem with dreamers is they usually are not doers. Their achievements are grand up here, but here, where it counts, they fall short. And I had a lot of anger when he would do that because see, he doesn't understand. Why doesn't he make me feel better? I don't want to be picked on. Don't ask me the question. Rudy couldn't pay attention. He had a learning disorder, dyslexia. They didn't really understand uh, the learning disorders when I was growing up. So they would call you slow or stupid or uneducatable, untrainable, uncoachable. You don't have the grades for a Julia community, much less Notre Dame. The secret to happiness in this life is to be grateful for the gifts the good Lord has bestowed upon us. So Rudy looked outside the classroom for acceptance and found a lifeline in football coach Gordon Gillespie. He always made us feel we could win football games and he always encouraged us. I never, never really remembered him um, making us feel bad about what we did, but he always would remind us why we should work harder. But Coach Gillespie wasn't Rudy's only inspiration. He credits his amazing triumph in football and life to a series of people he calls his mentors of all ages and from all walks of life. Man, I could think about many people that came into my life, I don't even remember their names, Said would say something like, hey, you could do that, son, just work hard. That's a mentor. Uh, or more of a next level mentor, someone who takes real interest in you. At the power plant where Rudy went to work after high school, he found a friend who changed the course of his life. I believe in soulmates. I believe, I believe people become friends and dreamers when they have this, when they touch each other's soul uh, of, of that, that spirit, that human spirit. He had it, I had it, and we could connect on it. How's it look? You were born to wear that jacket. Well, you know what my dad always said, having dreams is what makes life tolerable. But in June 1972, disaster struck, sending Rudy an even more urgent message. His death gave me a reason. It was a moment of breakthrough. It made me realize that, you know, I better get my life straight now. I better get my priorities straight. And that death reminded me of do what's right. Rudy left home for South Bend, Indiana. When I stepped on that campus, it cleansed all the negative feelings I had about life. 
It made me very powerful. I was determined to find the answer. What must I do to go to Notre Dame? Father John Cavanaugh showed Rudy how junior college could be his path to Notre Dame. God must have put him there because he was a past president of Notre Dame. He was a little older. He just happened to be there that night. Why are you here? I want to go to school at Notre Dame. What you need is the dream. Then find out what you must do. A teacher at the junior college discovered Rudy's learning disorder and did something about it. One of the greatest college football coaches of all time, Notre Dame's Era Parsegian took time out for Rudy. He was the guy. He was God. <laughs> and I wasn't the quickest guy on the team, but, uh, or the biggest, but, but I led the team in tackles. But Coach Parsegian wasn't Rudy's only Notre Dame football mentor. One janitor was really had a reality check with me all the time. He noticed I was a dreamer, but what are you really doing about it? And I guarantee a week won't go by in your life. You won't regret walking out, letting them get the best of you. But Rudy had plenty of cause to be discouraged. When I got the rejection letters, it was very, it's like that star. You're close, but so far away. I'm desperate. If I don't get in next semester, it's over, done. Notre Dame doesn't accept senior transfers. Well, you're a hell of a job, kid. You're chasing down your dream. I don't care what kind of job I did. If it doesn't produce results, it doesn't mean anything. I think you'll discover that it will. In 1974, when Rudy finally won admission to Notre Dame... It's kind of like, is this happening? He went after his next goal, a spot on the football team's practice squad. This is real stuff. This is not a dream. This is reality. You're going to get hit, you're going to get knocked down, and you're going to have to perform. And he did, serving on the Notre Dame practice squad for two bruising seasons. I got hit from the blind side one day. I thought I actually died. I, I, I got hit so hard, I didn't know. You ever get hit by a truck? No. But if you got hit by a truck, you don't know it's coming. Can you imagine what that feels like? That's how it felt. I would really appreciate it if you could let me dress one game next season. Look, Rudy, the NCAA really hamstrings us with this 60 rule. In certain positions, we only have one backup. Not that I want to be an All-American, not that I want to be a starter. I just want to run through that tunnel. I paid the price. I've been to practice every day. I gave you my commitment. Now, you're telling me, because of a rule, that I can't run through that tunnel? It was just two days before the final home game of Rudy's senior year. It was his last chance to dress. I want Rudy to dress in my place, coach. He deserves it. He wrote me years later, says, I was a guy, myself and another guy went in and asked if you could dress in our place. And that's when Coach Devine says, yeah, we could dress, Rudy. Or the other coach says, yeah, let's dress the kid. Coach, he deserves a dress. It was November 8th, 1975. Game day. Notre Dame versus Georgia Tech. It was a day Rudy would remember forever. When you hear the crowd, it's kind of like, is this happening? You don't even realize where you're at. You don't even know where you're at because you go into this zone. And the reality hits, the game starts. <laughs> that was the feeling. There is a magical feeling here. There's tradition. The tradition just comes out of those walls. You feel the ghost of Rockman. You feel the ghost of all these great football players. Crowd cheering, yay, or whatever. 60,000 people just screaming for those kids running through that tunnel. The stage was set for a big game, and the crowd's excited. That was the setting for that football game. Notre Dame had to win to have a chance to go to a bowl game. Watching from the sidelines, even Rudy could never have dreamed what would happen next. The students at Notre Dame found out about Rudy through a newspaper article. And I talked about 
It was my dream to play for Notre Dame. It would be a, a dream come true if I could play football one time, one second for Notre Dame. Just step on that field during a game would be a dream come true. Rudy, Rudy. Then all of a sudden, the players are saying, put him in, coach, put him in. And the head coach says, put who in, put who in. You know, he didn't know what they were talking about. About three minutes left in that football game, I said, why can't I play? We're winning. It won't matter whether I play or not. When the coach says, get in there, Rudy, I said, no. I'm a defensive player. He got mad. And the minute I said that, Notre Dame scored. Now they had to put me in the football game. He says, go in defensive end. Replace Brown or replace the what's his zap. Like, just go in. Just get the hell in there, he says. And I go in there, and they come out off the field. And I'll never forget getting in that huddle. That's when I knew I could get the tackle. And, and as we're in the huddle, I said, I can get this guy. And I remember lining up. It was so awesome because everything goes in slow motion now. Now there's only five seconds left. I knew I could get him. And that's when the rally hit me. And the crowd started chanting, Rudy. As I tackled him, that game ended. And that's when the team picked me up. That was a special moment, a moment of pride. The power of the dream is giving someone hope. You know, that's the most powerful thing you can give someone is hope. Giving your spirit to other people, giving them the feeling of, you know, it's worth it, all this hard work. It was worth it, even when it looked the darkest. It's like a little boy coming up to me today, a 10-year-old boy, saying, I'm going to Notre Dame. I will never say to him, you can't. I will always say to him, you're going to do it.